Welcome everyone. We will get started in just a few minutes. Um, we put a message in as an announcement. If you wanted to go ahead and, and um, take our poll while you're waiting, you can do that. I'll put that link in again, uh, but we will get started here in just a couple of minutes. Around 6.05, we'll launch and, and get started. For those of you who've already joined us, we'll be getting started in just a minute, about three minutes, two minutes. Got a few more folks coming in. We'll be getting started here in just a minute. OK, well, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for joining us tonight for uh, the, the second webinar in our UCPS College Readiness Parent Series. This one is Getting Ready for College. We are glad that you are here with us tonight um, with us on the call. So my name is Jessica Garner. I'm the Director of College Readiness. And then also on the call, you will hear from tonight. We have Chris Conway, who's our College Readiness and Humanities Coordinator, as well as Zach McCloskey, who is our Lead High School Counselor. So if you don't mind taking a minute to complete our poll, we just want to know who is in the virtual room tonight. Um, there's just two questions on this poll. What school does your child attend and what grade is your child in? So we're going to give everybody a minute to do that if you've not had a chance yet. Um, the, um, the poll is in the, the Q&A chat bar. I'm going to put it in there one more time. If you want to go ahead and click that link, right from the chat bar, the Q&A, the questions bar, um, you can click that and take our poll. And we will give everybody a minute to go ahead and share with us what school your child attends and what grade your child is in. So we'll take a minute and let folks go ahead and do that. We've got a few more that are just joining us, but this is just gonna give us an idea of, of who's in the room um, and how we should tailor our presentation. All right. So let's take a look. So we've got, looks like we've got folks from across the district, which is great. Um, almost all of our schools are represented here. Let me take one more second and just refresh this and see, looks like we've got a few more that are completing our poll. And what grade is your child in? So let me refresh this and see if we have the most updated data. Um, looks like we have mostly juniors, which is great. This is a, a good time for you to attend this webinar. I actually have a junior at home as well. So um, 
Great. Well, we're going to go ahead and just jump into our content a little bit tonight. What we're going to talk to you about, um, Mr. McCloskey is going to talk to you a little bit about the school counselor role and what you can expect to, how you can expect to engage with your high school counselor. We're going to talk to you a little bit about choosing a best fit college, the different types of college applications, what you should consider when you're actually applying for college. Um, we're going to do kind of a fun college admission simulation with you and We've never done this virtually, so we're going to give it a shot tonight and see how it goes. And then you can always put questions in the question and answer bar um, in that little area, and then we will um, then we will answer those probably throughout, and then we'll save some time at the end. Okay. So I've got a couple people who are sharing with us in the um, in the question and answer piece. Of that couldn't get into the poll and that's perfectly fine. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump in. Um, I'm going to let Mr. McCloskey start and um, let me get ready to go. Okay, very good. So I'm going to go on mute and let Mr. McCloskey share. So if you want to unmute Mr. McCloskey and go right in. Uh, well, good, good evening everybody. My name is Dan McCloskey and I am uh, the lead council, lead high school counselor for Union County. I spent the past three years in this position and prior to that I was a high school counselor at Weddington High School for about 15 years. Um, the role of the school counselor is a role is a role that's changing in our county. Um, for many years the school counselor worked primarily as a um, kind of keeping people in compliance with what they needed to, to have to travel through high school to, to meet the state's graduation requirements and also help students plan for moving beyond high school on into a, a post secondary educational opportunity, whether that was a trade school, a two year school, the military or uh, colleges. Obviously tonight we're kind of talking about supporting college and that's what we're going to talk mostly about with the high school counselors role. Um, your counselors will work with you in all four years. You will develop a relationship with them over that time period. And, it, and hopefully by the time the fourth year comes around, your senior year of high school when you're applying to college, you have a working relationship with your counselor that will allow you to, to speak and, and share your, your thoughts and your interests as to what um, it is you're hoping to do after high school. Uh, the primary job of a counselor with a ninth grader or with a 10th grader is making sure the students are, are, are choosing courses wisely that allow them to have the most opportunities in their junior and senior year to, to maximize their opportunities and also to demonstrate their strengths to colleges so that they they have the ability to attend the schools they want to. Um, what we never want to have is a student get all the way through four years of school and realize by not taking advantage of some of the opportunities we have here in the county, some of the colleges they wanted to go to aren't an option. So your counselor should be working with you on, on, on developing a plan for course selection and course um, uh, pathways that, that allow you to move towards your interest and also demonstrate your strengths. Um, the process of developing a relationship with a counselor is, is twofold. Part of it will be your counselor coming into your classrooms. Part of it will be your counselor giving presentations, but part of it also has to be you going into the school counseling office and working to develop that relationship. Uh, they are a island of resources and they, they try to, to work with every student as much as possible, um, but there are some of our students who are on a path and, and, and need very little assistance and there's some of our students who are who, who need a lot of assistance and um, wherever you fall on that you kind of need to be proactive a little bit in, in kind of cultivating that relationship with your school counselor. They will make sure you're taking the courses you have to have to graduate. That's one of the things our county prides ourselves on is our high school graduation rate. We don't allow students to not take those courses. Um, Sometimes that means though that your plan for courses and the school system's plan, plans of what they want you to do don't always align. And if you have that relationship, that conversation, uh, you can work those two plans together to, to maximize what the options are. So it's important that you start to talk with your counselor, start meeting your counselor. Um, they want to talk to you. I know it doesn't seem like that. People used to, when I was in the building, say, you know, Mr. Cluster, you scare me, you don't smile a lot, but that's just me. That's the way I am. Uh, so you have to, you know, get yourself in a position where you are comfortable working and talking to counselors and realize there are five counselors in that office and you might have a really good relationship with one of them who's not your assigned counselor. That doesn't mean you can't talk to that person. They all want to help all, all of the students. So while there are assignments that are specific to, yes, 
I was in charge of kids with P through Z, make sure they had the right courses. It didn't mean that a counselor at Weddington or, or a student at Weddington couldn't go talk to Miss Washington, who's still a counselor there right now when I was there. Um, and that's the way it should be in all of our offices across the county. The counselors work in, in serving in, in a lot of different roles in the application process. They assist with school selection. Um, they're not going to tell you what school to go to. They're not going to sit down and say, hey, these are the five schools I think you should apply to. They're going to work with you based on what you share with them to identify schools that are appropriate for not only what you want to do, but also your abilities and skills because college admissions um, are, are selective. It's not simply I want to go to the school, I get to go to that school. You do have to apply so you have to meet certain types. They're going to help you identify different application types and what's appropriate in this state. There are a lot of different applications or not in the state in the country. There's a lot of different types of applications out there right now. Um, and sometimes it's beneficial to use the one size fits all common application. Sometimes it's more beneficial with the school to use the school specific one. So they'll work with you on that. Um, and they also help with a lot, a large portion of your application and reporting the school based information, your GPA, your core, your test scores, your 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 uh, final grades and courses, which are all in your transcript. That's a large function of the counselor process in the application process. They're really not called upon writing a lot of the recommendations that they used to be maybe even five or 10 years ago. So they're going to work with getting the academic side of, of, and the school side of support for you for your college application process. Um, and that only happens by communicating with your counselor. Okay, uh, school reporting responsibilities. Schools, when a student applies to college, there are, there are three people they're depending on. They're dependent on themselves. That's the application part that they're going to have to fill out the application. They're going to have to make that payment to the school and they're going to have to check all the boxes they have to do by a certain timeline. Then there's a whole part that is the secondary school report. That's going to be your transcript, your school form, your school profile. These are all documents that the school will submit to either the college or to your application um, system on your behalf. Those things don't happen automatically. Those are things that you'll have to request and you'll need to, to work with your school and how that happens and you'll need to send those. We do that through a system called SCORE, which is new to us this year. In the past, we used a, a program called Naviance. Some of your, if you have older siblings, your parents probably are familiar with that system. Uh, SCORE is a new improved program. We're very excited about it. It has a lot of great opportunities and it gives you a lot more uh, tracking ability on your side. Uh, but you'll need to kind of start working with SCORE. And many of you have probably received an invite to join SCORE at this point. And um, if you haven't, you want to kind of go through your email and, and track that down. Um, counselors do complete evaluations sometimes. Counselors do write recommendations for some schools. Some schools still require that. But for the most part, your counselor recommendation and your counselor forms that are being filled out are very much just reporting school data. They ask you as a student to tell them your GPA, tell them your, what classes you took and everything else. And they kind of use the data that we submit to, to verify that everything you told them was right. Um, so that's kind of the role of the school counselor in the application process. Uh, they are not something, somebody you're, you want to introduce yourself to in, the, in your senior year. This is a person you need to start talking to sooner rather than later. Um, with 9th and 10th grade, a lot of that's going to be course planning. 11th grade, it really should be talking about some of the tests that you're going to be taking, um, whether you should take the test or not with recent changes in, the, in with COVID. The SAT and the ACT uh, this year isn't as important to our current seniors as it has been to every senior class up to this year. Next year might be very important again. We're not exactly certain what that pathway is, so we're working with colleges and finding out what they're looking for, and they're trying to, they'll come back and, and share that information with you, but if I were you, if, if I was a student getting ready to apply to college, I'd make sure I'm asking my counselor those type of questions. Should I take the ACT again? Should I, um, you know, what school should I look at? Should I consider, because I have a really high GPA, not taking the ACT? Um, it, it's a different situation. The, the system is changing this year as we speak. Okay, so we are going to um, we're going to flip here and talk a little bit about choosing a best fit college. So thank you, Dan, for talking about the role of the counselor and kind of thinking about 
um, you know, what that might look like. And I, I think that Dan's message about students advocating for themselves is one that we can't underscore enough. You know, counselors are excited to work with all of their students. They want to work with all their students, um, but they don't know that you need help unless you ask them. And of course, there is a baseline they're going to provide, but I think it's a great suggestion to um, for the students to reach out to their counselors. So let's talk a little bit about how you pick the right college, uh, because there's there's a lot that needs to go into this. And I think that I want you to just take a minute and I want you to think about the finish line and think about what does that look like for your child? Um, and, and I don't just mean, you know, right after high school. I mean, when you say we're done, we've raised our kids, they're done. What does that look like for your child? So take a minute and contemplate that because that's really where you need to start with deciding what is the best fit college for your child. So I'm going to just ask a couple of you, if you don't mind, to share um, in the chat window in the Q&A what your finish line might look like for your child and we'll publish a couple of different responses to that um, and that, that way you can kind of see how I, it's hard to make these webinars interactive but I would love to just hear what does the finish line look like for your child when you think about way off in the future what is that going to look like all right I'm waiting to see if we have any come in So if you want to just type in the Q&A bar what that looks like, we'll publish a couple of those so that everyone can see it. All right, no takers. Well, I will go ahead and share. Um, for my children, I, I feel like the finish line is that they are happy, well-adjusted, self-sufficient adults. To me, it's not about the college that they go to or that they get into. That's a part of it, but really my end for my children is that they are self-sufficient. Um, so that's kind of where you have to start with the whole college process. It can be super, super stressful, um, but I think that you can also take a little bit of the pressure off yourself and know that there is a path for everybody that's out there. So let's take a look. We kind of like to flip this process a little bit. And so this is something that I've been talking to my children about. I have two in high school and, and again, like many of you, one who's a junior, one who's in ninth grade. And we talk a lot about what they want to do when they grow up, right? So, you know, this should really be your first choice. One of the colleges that my older daughter was was looking at, it's a, it was a school that um, she might be interested in for some sports and things. And then she realized that she wants to go into something that has to do with um, exercise, science, and that college had no opportunities for that. And so this is really where we needed to start. That was easy for her to cross that college off of her list, off of her list. And so we've got a couple of tools. What I want to highlight through each of this, these processes is what are the tools that Union County Public Schools has for you um, to help your child kind of figure these things out. So in SCORE that Dan just talked about, there is something called a U Science Career Profile. This is free. Every student has access to it. If you go into SCORE and you click up on the top under My Profile, scroll about halfway down, you'll see your, your opportunity to click into U Science um, and, and they can create that. It really is kind of a, um, it feels a little bit gamey that allows the students to kind of go through some simulations to figure out what careers might be best, sort of based on their personality, what their interests are, uh, and what they think they might be good at. So that's definitely an option. Our CTE department has also purchased a program called Major Clarity that you should start to hear more about. This is our first year with Major Clarity and they're just starting to roll this out in some of the CTE classes. CTE stands for Career and Technical Education um, and I've got those listed on here as well. But these are great ways for your students to take some classes in high school um, and in middle school actually to think about what are some careers they might be interested in. Students can take classes in high school that are about finance, foods and nutrition, in the health sciences area, agriculture. The, the options just go on and on of the classes they can take. And it really gives kids an opportunity to think about what they really might be interested in and also what they might not be interested in. So that's the first step. Once you have done that, then think about your major. And if you're in SCORE, you can see um, the fields of study. And when you look at a specific college page, you'll scroll down a little bit 
and you can look in there and you can see your fields of study um, kind of under the academics piece and you can you can expand those to get more information about specific majors and then we would also share that CFNC which is the College Foundation of North Carolina offers a career cluster slash major search so kids can go in there and we'll make this presentation available to you um, we'll put it on the college readiness web page so that you can click right through and get to that but I would encourage all students to create an account with CFNC. You just go to CFNC.org and sign up for an account. I do see a question in here um, that can middle school students get an account with SCORE and unfortunately SCORE does not make their product available to middle school students, but CFNC is a great place to start because you can do a lot of the things um, in CFNC that you could do in SCORE. It's just not quite as streamlined and, and CFNC focuses mostly on North Carolina colleges. So once you've selected your major, then it's time to take a look at which colleges might be ready. This right here can allow you to, to cross some things off your list because you know you're gonna only look at those colleges that have the major that lead to the careers that you might be interested in. So we would recommend high school students starting to look and score. Middle school students, as I said before, can look in CFNC. You can also start on college web pages, but some of the things that are available in SCORE um, you can do a college search and when you get to the college page, you can do a virtual visit right there. You can take a virtual tour. They have partnered with this company called College Real that does these really cool, almost selfie videos of college students who are just sort of walking around campus with their phone, sharing information about their college. Maybe they're walking through their dorm talking about what it's like to live in a dorm. Uh, they might be walking around campus talking about their favorite place to eat on campus talking about their favorite building on campus or their favorite place to hang out. So these are great because they're created by students for students. And so it's not, um, you know, some old fogey like me trying to talk to kids about why they might be interested in that college. And then there are some videos in SCORE that students can watch specific to that college. Again, this is a great resource for you. Um, we're going to share a couple of things here in just a second. Uh, maybe it's at the end, I believe that are some opportunities for your your students um, to look at a couple of different virtual apps that you can do virtual visits so you know if you've got a you can do this with your phone or if you have a, a vr headset you can also look at that and you, you feel like you're right there in the college you can kind of look around and see what it would look like to be there those are all offered for free um, there's an app called um you visit and so we'll put that in the in the chat bar as well in the q a bar so that you can have the name of that but there's a free download for that so some other things about picking the right college for you um, what you know why you should pick a different college think about the characteristics that that particular college has um, you know is it does it align with your beliefs and your value system is it um, does it have a football team if that's something that's really interested something you're really interested in and so um, you know think about the different aspects of the college next we would encourage you to make a list you can make that list right in score and score is available every student in high school already has an account with score they just need to go in and go to their green student startup page and click on the score icon and log in with google they'll be right in um, so you can create your college list there just by adding them to your favorites and then you can do a comparison tool and then we would encourage you to visit colleges right now that's going to really be virtual reality tours that are available to you um, unfortunately a lot of the colleges are not allowing you to come on campus and visit but that'll open up um, we're hoping you know this spring and over the summer that some colleges will open up and um, when you apply for admission pay close attention to the deadlines we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the different ways to apply in a minute but the deadlines are very important um, you know they don't really care if you had a technical glitch and you waited till the night before and the application closed they're going to say sorry so pay close attention and then think about the different types of schools and what score allows you to do is to categorize schools based on how likely you might be to get in so they've got really nice things where you can look at all the students from your school who um, applied to that school in the last several years of course it doesn't have names and you can see whether they were accepted if they were waitlisted if they were denied based on what the gpa and test scores were just to kind of give you an idea and so students can say this is a school that might be in my likely zone i'm likely to get into that school 
maybe this is in my target zone, that kind of where I would really like to go. And then if there's a school that's kind of their dream school that maybe it's really tough to get into, um, you know, you can you can take a look and, and mark that as a REACH school. Don't necessarily count it out, but if you want to apply to a REACH school, make sure you also have a balance with some likely schools and some target zone schools in there as well. And this is something that your counselors can help advise you on um, as you go through that process with them. That'll be more close to your to your junior year um, that you'll start to take a look at that. So let's talk a little bit about um, some different types of applications um, before we get into our simulation. So there are some school specific applications. These are applications where you have to go straight to the website for that college or the university and you just complete the application right on their website. Um, these are colleges like Western Carolina, for example. It's very traditional they're slowly going away. This Western Carolina is the only school in the UNC system that still only offers a, um, a an individual school specific application. So most of them you're going to have some services where you can um, where you can have multiple schools apply. You can apply to multiple schools at one time. We'll talk a little bit about those in just a second. So these are three services, common application, the coalition application, and the universal college application. And these numbers that are on here are approximate, but these are, these are applications where if the college says that they, have, they participate in, let's say the common application, for example, that means that you can create an account with the common application. You can say the colleges you're interested in applying to, and you fill out your demographic information one time, your name, your, um, test scores, your, you know, well, you have to send your scores, but you can self-report some of those, but your name, your address, your birthday, all of that information, you fill it out one time, you write your essays in there, and then those schools will get that from the common application. So this is typically an easier way to apply because you don't have to fill out quite as many separate applications. Um, and in deciding which one is right for you, you really need to, um, well, we'll get to that in just a second, but the last kind, very uncommon in North Carolina, some state school systems, and I think Dan mentioned New York is listed on here. Um, California also has their own shared application service where if you wanted to apply to any of the schools in the state universities of New York or in the California system, they have their own application that you can complete um, that is, is applicable to all of those different schools. So there aren't any of those in North Carolina, unfortunately. Maybe someday we'll get a UNC system general application, but we're not there yet. Um, so how do you decide which one you're going to fill out? Well, you need to start by looking at which one does that college participate in, right? So if you have a college that says, well, we will take a school specific application or we'll take the common application, and then the next school you're applying to also accepts the common application and maybe a third one does, it might be better off for you to go ahead and complete the common application because then you can do those three applications at once. Um, so you just kind of have to look at that and you can, again, this is something that your counselor can help you figure out. Also, when you are in SCORE as a, as a senior, you'll do these applications as a senior. Um, when you're in SCORE and you say that you, you basically move your colleges from your favorited list over to I'm um, planning to apply list, it's going to ask you um, how you plan to apply and it'll actually pop up and show you all of the options for that particular college. So if, if it's directly through the institution, if it's with the common application, it'll show you those two options and it'll ask you to click how you're going to apply to that school. So that'll help you narrow that down as well. Um, and I see a couple of questions. I do want to um, I do want to reference a couple of these questions. One is, can parents have access to SCORE? Absolutely, so students go into their profile, they click invite a parent, they'll need to know if you attended college, they can actually choose which college you attended, if you attended any, any college, um, and then you will, and they'll put your email address in there and you'll get an email invitation to join. One other thing that's great about SCORE, um, specifically on the parent side is, you can suggest colleges for your students, so if, you know, if they have not put your alma mater in there and you are interested in, in having them explore that, you can suggest that to them and they can either add it to their list of favorites or they can dismiss it and say they're not interested. Um, you can also, as a parent, complete a financial, um, financial aid calculator in SCORE where you put in some specific information about your finances 
And then instead of just getting a generic cost estimate, it will actually give you a, per, a little bit of a more personalized cost estimate for the different colleges that you're interested in. Um, so yes, I would definitely encourage our parents to, um, to ask their students to invite them to get a score account. Okay, so at this time, we are gonna flip a little bit. I'm gonna let Chris introduce this game um, that we're gonna do, unless there are any more questions. Let me see, there's a couple more questions in here. Um, we had a couple questions about, or a couple comments that the live feed froze, but I'm not seeing any more of them popping up, so I'm guessing we caught back up. Okay, and that could just be an individual internet. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how it went there. Okay. But, okay. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Chris, to introduce our college admission simulation and share a little bit with folks, and then we'll just kind of go back and forth um, with some of the different, act the pieces of the activity. Okay. All right, so what we have here is a simulation. We have, let's see, he, nine students um, who are trying to get into our fictitious, uh, prestigious Union County University. And they are, um, like I said, these nine have applied to the university. You can only admit three of the nine. Now, looking at this right here, you can see that we have the nine students labeled by their GPA. And if it was solely based on GPA, this is how the decision would go. Fred would get in, Harry would get in, Julia would get in. But that is not how college applications work. Um, colleges don't just look at GPA. That's part of it, obviously, but there's the whole picture that they're going to be considering. And so we're going to go through the simulation and show you how students were going to go. They're going to move up and down in this list based on things they've done, things they haven't done, things they didn't even think about doing. And so we're going to see who really gets into our prestigious Union County University. And I just want to make the comment here that, um, you know, this is this actually happens with admissions groups. So they sit around, they have admitted everybody, they're down to their last nine and they got three spots left that they're going to offer. And so, you know, as you you as the parents, as you sit and you kind of listen to this, we want you to think about all of these different pieces. We'll pause periodically throughout to kind of talk about why that was a factor um, and, and, and what that looks like. But um, but yeah, think about who you might admit and why. Now, what you don't see on this, normally when we do this um, face to face, we have volunteers and they come up and they hold up the GPA sign and on the back, you see different characteristics about each of these students. So some of these students um, may have parents that went to that university. Some of them may have taken really hard classes and maybe some took really easy classes and got this GPA. Some were involved in extracurricular activities. And so you don't actually have that insight, but each of these students has different characteristics. And so we'll we'll talk you through what the admissions, um, the admissions counselors, the admissions committee, excuse me, took a look at when they um, when they went through this process. All right, so we have, if you have taken an exceptionally strong academic program, you get to move up two spaces. So we can see that Julia was a 3.8. She's now to the top of the line and Phil to 3.4. He has moved up and he's gone ahead of Bob and Sally based on what their academic program was in high school. So what do we mean by an exceptionally strong academic program? So in Union County Public Schools when, or in North Carolina, when you take high school courses, um, your courses can be labeled at different ways. There can be core, like regular level, and then we have what are known as honors courses. And if you take an honors course, an example of this honors course would be biology. You take biology honors. That course, that level of rigor that you're gonna experience in that course has the opportunity to boost your GPA half a point. So if you receive an A instead of a 4.0, you will receive a 4.5 boost to your GPA. So you'll notice when we get to, um, when you, if you get into your score, student score account, you'll notice we have their weighted GPA and their unweighted GPA. Their weighted GPA takes into account that GPA boost from honors courses they may have taken in other high level courses. We have our AP courses. At least 10 have been offered all of our high schools. 
and this gives you a one point GPA boost. So if you um, perform very well in the classroom and you receive an A in your AP Biology course, instead of a 4.0, that is going to give you a 5.0. Um, many colleges will offer, have the opportunity to offer you credit for your score on the AP exam, depending on um, that college. Uh, North Carolina school systems uh, are trying to go to a more uniform standard. I believe it is a three will get you a uh, college credit. And it just depends on the system. It just depends on the state. Everybody does it a little bit different. But AP courses, which are very rigorous, and you get that extra point for it. Uh, IB courses or International Baccalaureate that is offered at Marvin Ridge High School if you are going into the ninth grade. That also gets you a one point GPA boost. Um, that credit opportunity is also determined by a national exam that is taken in this um, late spring. And do you want to talk a little bit more about how students can get into this if they're considering it for our middle school participants? Sure. So um, the the International Baccalaureate program, the official diploma program doesn't start until students are in their junior year. However, um, we have started what we're calling an IB pathway program so that students can come in ninth grade. It was pretty disruptive to start uh, with the IB program halfway through high school and have to leave your high school to go to a different school to do that. So this is offered to students around the district. There's a lottery at the end of eighth grade where students can make a decision to go to uh, Marvin Ridge High School for the IB Pathway program. And in, in ninth and 10th grade, typically students take honors classes and sometimes they'll take advanced placement classes before they get to that junior year when they're taking IB classes. So it's really just an opportunity to make sure that students get their uh, prerequisites because there are some pretty specific prerequisites that students have to take to get into the IB program as 11th, well, into the diploma program um, as juniors. And so being at Marvin Ridge and in the pathway program allows students to make sure they get the prerequisites and that they will experience that high level of rigor that they're going to experience when they get into the diploma program. Um, it is called a diploma program because if students do well on a certain number of exams and they pass them all, they can earn what's called an IB diploma. Um, if you earn that IB diploma, and I will tell you Marvin Ridge has a very high pass rate for getting that diploma, different colleges will offer you different things. So some colleges will give you college credit. Some will give you um, scholarships for tuition, like uh, one school I've heard of, Texas Christian University. My understanding, I don't know if they're doing it this year, but that they have given a full tuition scholarship to students who have earned their IB diploma. So it's definitely something worth looking at. Um, there will be more information coming out in December around about this program and the application window for current eighth graders will be open in December. Um, so hopefully if you are already in high school, you heard about that. All right, and our last bit of this is the career and college promise courses. Basically, students have the opportunity to take courses through SPCC. Sometimes those courses occur on the campus. Sometimes if enrollment is high enough, they will occur in the school building. Depending on the course, they can either earn a half point or a one point boost to their GPA. They can receive college credit for passing the classes and there's a pet you see right there where it says must enroll in a pathway. They just can't pick courses at random. There has to be a reason to the courses they are picking. There has to be a purpose to the courses. So if you take this course, that's the intention you're going to take another because they want those courses to actually go towards possible um, diploma status if you continue on SPCC. Um, I wanted to go back real quick talking about the advanced placement courses. When we talk about how rigorous they are, many of these courses, not only do you take a, the actual AP course, but before you can even take it, there is a pre-level course that also builds you up towards it. So not, it's not just one course you're taking that is going to give you this, um, this boost to your GPA. There is a secondary course or a pre-course that goes with it. So these AP courses truly are like pre-college. They're really getting you ready. And if you can show that you have that academic process to do well in them in high school, that does bode well for you in your college applications. All right, if you play the oboe or the viola, move up one space. Now, why would Mary and Sally get it up, get to move up one space? Well, raise your hand if you know anybody who's played the oboe or the viola. All right, that makes you unique. And colleges like 
people who are unique. So that is going to help you move up in the uh, GPA game right here. If you clearly stated that this college was your first choice by making an early decision application and commitment, move up two spaces. Well, what does that mean? Bob told this college, let's say it's as an example, UNC uh, Chapel Hill, um, that he wants to do early decision. So when he does that, he's basically saying, if I get accepted, I will go to your school. All right, and when students do that application process and they choose early decision, if that college offers it, they basically sign a legally binding contract. Um, that is something that that they sign, the parent signs, the, con or the counselor signs, and it basically binds that child to that college if they are accepted. So there's there's a risk to it if you want to do that, but chances are that's the college you are just dying to get into. So you're willing to say that to put you at the head of the line where possible. Early action, that is um, not quite like early decision. Basically, you apply, you just get your answer sooner, but you do not actually have to commit to going to that college until the normal general reply of, yes, by May 1, I plan on attending this college. Regular admission, that is the most common type of college application deadline. It is usually by the end of January for those applications to get in. I will say right now we have a lot of regular admission colleges going on and we have free college application two weeks here in North Carolina. So if you have not taken advantage of that or if you had know a senior right now, make sure they are aware that they can be taking or applying to colleges right now and having the application fee waived at many colleges in North Carolina right now. And that is for regular admissions going on. Rolling admissions are for colleges that they have no start date, no end date to their application process. They are accepting people up until the point they fill in their slots. So not quite a big a rush, but don't just put them off to the side and say, oh, I'll do that back in February. You never know. They could fill in their spots early. So but that's just what that means. If you see rolling admissions, they will take it applications all the way to the point where they have filled their incoming class. All right. If your intended major is psychology or pre-med, move down one space. Well, I feel like in this world today, we do need people, we do need psychologists, and we do need doctors, but unfortunately, a lot of people at this college this year have applied into the psychology program or they wanna be pre-med. So since you're a dime a dozen in their eyes, um, you're actually gonna move down a little bit. That's just how it goes this year. And no, you cannot find out where are you in that application pool of how many kids have, um, are saying they want to do psychology, how many want to do pre-med. That's just the luck of the draw this year. Okay, I want to pause here and just have everybody take a look. So again, if we were looking just at GPA, um, you can see here that Harry, who was our number two here, has moved all the way down to the fifth place. So keep that in mind. These things matter. We're going to speed up a little bit because we're getting close on time. Um, so let's take us to the next one. Okay. <clears throat> if your intended major is Greek, move up two spaces. I don't know too many people that have uh, majored in Greek, so that makes Sally unique. If you do not know any of your teachers well and had trouble finding someone to write your college recommendations, move down two spaces. Well, some colleges require one, two, some require none, it just depends, but this college has required some college recommendations and if you've not built those relationships, with those teachers and were able to get a high quality recommendation from them, maybe because you didn't let them know all the great stuff you had done, that can work against you because otherwise your teacher recs from them don't really sound all of that convincing that you're a top flight student. One of the things that colleges uh, look at with the recommendation, they're looking to the recommendation to find out more information about you that they couldn't glean from your application or from your essay. So if you don't have well written recommendations, then it's not going to help you as much. So that's why these students move down. <clears throat> if when you process your college essay, you forgot to change the name of the college to which you were applying, move down four spaces. I'm sorry, Julia, but if you can't remember to change it from 
University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill to Union County University um, that shows that lack of attention to detail and lack of do we really think you want to go to our school? Or did you just fill this out really fast? So unfortunately, that's going to hurt you big time, Julia. So you go down four spaces. Ouch. If you are a legacy, move up two spaces. Mom and dad are alumni. Good for you. You get to move up a couple spots. So George and Sally, uh, they bumped up a little bit. So now we can see Julia, who was in at the beginning with a 3.8. She's all the way to second to last. It's not looking too good for Julia right now. If your combined SAT score is between 2000 and 2400, move up one, 1600 to 2000, don't move, and below a 1600, move down one. So you can see what that has done right here with Phil and Mary. Um, Dan, do you wanna explain a little bit more about the combined, why that matters? Well, I was gonna say, we need to probably update this. The, the site that we borrowed this from, uh, this was when the SAT was on the 24, 100 scale and so now they're on the 1600 point scale um, they they decided they were going to add some and then they then they decided to take it away so yeah uh, I, I will talk about the combining of your score colleges will take your your best uh verbal and math section from the sat or from the act the verbal math and science and come up with a score it's called your super score so you can take a math from an october test of this year and a, your verbal section from the November test of last year and combo those to come up with your best possible score. They're trying to admit you to the college. That's the thing we all have to remember. They want you to come. They want to fill all their all their spaces at their school. So they're going to try to give the best picture of you possible to the application or to, to the uh, admissions team. Um, so it's important that when you're looking at your test, you, you can kind of look, you know, look at your scores and, and be honest with yourself. Uh, some of us have scored the highest score we're, we're going to score in our test, and we know like I've kind of maxed out. And then some people know, well, maybe if I work a little bit, I can pull my math score up a little bit. So you want to look at your scores, you know, your test a little bit more in more depth than simply what was the overall score. All right, we have Albert right here. Albert is a program that high school students have access to. They can do SAT prep, they can do ACT prep, along with practice for core and AP level courses. So I'm going to give that plug in real quick. Students can access this through the student startup page. They'll see the little Albert guy right here. When they click on that, they'll be prompted to log in and they can go ahead and get started. They can either search for topics to practice on or their teachers can also assign them to a class and give them tasks to do. Um, Huntington Learning Center has been a great partner for Union County Public Schools. They offer, um, they have offered an SAT, a ACT Blitz in the past, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, but they also offer, if you want to on your own, you can go and do um, ACT, SAT prep, and other subject prep as well. If you did not write the optional college essay, move down one space, you can say, well, that's optional. What's the big deal? But do you really want to go the extra mile and go to this school? Well, they want to see who actually does the optional work. Who's going to go and do that extra work to get into our school? So Mary and Fred, they chose not to. Probably because they thought, well, I got a really good GPA. I don't need to go do this. Well, it dinged them a little. If the topic of your college essay was my trip to France or what I learned playing sports, move down one space. If that's what you did on your college essay, that's probably why they're getting knocked down because everybody's done this one. I think I might have done what I learned playing sports as well. And that was a long time ago. So these um, acceptance advisors, they've read read them all. So they want to see something unique. All right, so if you wrote the essay of the year, the one that was passed around the entire admissions office because it was so remarkable, move up three spaces. Georgia, come on up. You're doing really well. And that probably is going to be one of the greatest things you can do to improve your standing is show what is unique about you. Let those people know why you would be such a great addition to their um, college and the adversity you went through, what you've learned. Everybody's got their own story. You just got to tell them it in a way that makes sense and shows them what you can be as a great student. All right, if you plagiarized an AP history paper and got caught, sit down, you're out of the competition entirely, you are moving from consideration. So Julia, 
first you forgot to take your change to college and now you're in the red in the corner. Um, unfortunately, yes, if you get caught cheating on the AP exam, AP has said that they will share that with prospective colleges and that will, um, that's going to hurt. So Julia, if she's out of the running, she's going to stay there the rest of the time. And I do just want to make a comment here that um, colleges find out information that happened in high school. So, you know, this is a really big deal if you get caught cheating. Um, and I know that it's tempting with online school sometimes to take pictures of things and share them. Um, we've had these conversations in my house that, you know, you don't want to be even associated with that because if a college finds that out, whether it's from a counselor who calls the admissions office, whether it's from the principal, um, there's lots of ways for them to find out. It doesn't bode well for you. And they will most likely say that is not the type of student that we want at our university. Um, so keep that in mind. Encourage your students to have integrity and to do the work on their on their own because you know they might get a good grade in the class and they might get into college, but if they're cheating, chances are how successful you're going to be in college is going to be in question if you uh, couldn't do the work on your own originally. If you will be the first in your family to attend college, move up two spaces. First generation college students are highly attractive universities. That is a demographic that they are trying to reach to and try to lift up. And if you have that as part of your application, that is going to benefit you pretty well. So Phil gets to move up two spots because he looks like he's going to be the first one to go to college for his family. Good for him. If you participated in an enriching summer program between your junior and senior years, move up two spaces. Um, this is where we talk about how it's not just about what you do in school. What do you do outside of school? And what are these summer programs that you could be participating in? They could be uh, academic camps. They could be um, civic group camps. They could be all sorts of things, but they want to see what do you do outside of the normal school day to make you a better person? And if you're showing that you have that, that drive to do it, that is going to benefit you greatly. So Harry gets to move up two spaces. If you have not participated in any extracurricular activities, move down three spaces. Well, Fred, just because you're the smartest one here on paper doesn't mean that you're going to be the best candidate. We want to see that you have a life outside of school. That means you can handle adversity. Um, you know, they talk about kids who have nothing to do. They get themselves in trouble. Well, Fred's done done well in school, but can he balance his time well? You know, when you get to college, it's going to be very different. But that child who's got a three six but does a sport every single season, I think Bob handles his time better than Fred. So that's going to make an impact on where you get considered. If you have participated in a significant community service project, move up one space. That's part of that whole approach about a person, what, what kind of character they have, and are they looking out for people other than themselves? So Bob and Phil got to move up two spots, and that's where we are right now. If you were an Eagle Scout, move up two spaces. Good job, George. Uh, I think that shows high quality character right there, the kind of dedication that it takes to achieve Eagle Scout and that service project that goes with it. I've seen some outstanding projects students in Union County have done as far as their Eagle Scout project. So that is definitely a, a, a good thing to have on a college application. All right, so you have all these great things you've been doing. How do you get it known? Well, here's a sample. We have a demo account in SCORE. And as students go through high school, they can go into their profile and they can edit what is in there. So we can see that this demo student, he's has he's got a job. He's been working at Chick-fil-A. He's done work with the community service with Habitat and Humanity, and he's a part of some clubs and activities. We can see that he is the junior class or was a junior class president, and he was a part of the robotics team at his um, high school. So as a student, keep putting in these activities and achievements that you've had throughout high school. And why does this become important? Well, when your teacher is trying to do their letter of recommendation for you and score, so your counselor can send it to a college, the teacher will actually be able to see this portion of the student profile. And so they will be able to use these activities and achievements as a reference point when writing the recommendation. So chances are you've asked a teacher who knows you, probably thinks highly of you academically. Well, now they can pull in the non-academic stuff to really make that recommendation um, work well for you. 
And Chris, I was answering a question, so I maybe didn't hear the beginning part of what you said, but um, did you mention that you can also download a resume here? I did not get to that, no, good. Okay, so something else that's pretty cool about this, um, if you are in SCORE, once you've added this information in, you can go up to the top of your profile and download a resume that downloads in Microsoft Word format that allows you to um, edit that, but this gets you a, a good start and you can edit these different areas. So just another benefit of keeping track of your activities and achievements starting in ninth grade. And we had a question um, about activities, and I think that the rule of thumb is if it was something that happened during high school, colleges want to know about it. They really, you know, if you did something in middle school, it may have uh, relevance, but most of the time they're not going to consider activities that happened before high school. So, you know, if you're in middle school, start to keep track of things and think about it. Um, but certainly, you know, if you've done community service, keep that going into high school and then you can you can put that on your resume. If your ACT composite score, you can see where you can move up one point from a 30 to 36 or move down if you're a 24 or below and stay the same if you're in the 25 to 29. So George and Fred, they moved up and down one. And similar to with the SAT, when you um, take the ACT multiple times, uh, you can mix and match section scores. So you're gonna get the very best that you can out of this. Um, and am I missing anything else with that, Dan? with the ACT? That's new for this nope. year. Yeah. And you can, correct me if I'm wrong, you can only choose to do specific subject portions this time instead of having to retake the whole thing, correct? This year, which is new. Now, because we're in North Carolina, all juniors have to take the ACT. They take it for free during the school day in February. So that is on the books for this year. We'll see how it works in this new world that we are in but that's the plan they're going to take it in february and it's during the school day i just want to mention here students don't have to they don't have to register for this separately through the act website it's something that's provided by the state as as chris mentioned so um, i would encourage you if you're a junior start going into albert and start preparing now because you've got time between now and february that you can get ready for that and this score even though it's free and provided by the state you can use that for your college um, entrance requirements. If you are a varsity athlete and took second place at regionals in your sport, move up three spots. Well, why does this happen? Well, it's one thing to be a varsity athlete in that time balance, but two, that, that kind of um, effort that it takes to do that well, it isn't just something you can just show up every day and, and just practice and then go do. Nobody's very few students are that athletically gifted. It, that takes dedication, that takes work. So colleges are gonna recognize that um, a student who's able to do something like that, they've got that mental fortitude that they are looking for in a college student. If you got a D in an academic course at the end of your junior year, move down three spots. Um, yeah, sorry, Georgia, but junior year is a very significant year academically it's a make or break year that is when colleges expect you to be on your very best and getting a d does not bode well for you even if it is in a highly rigorous course that's still not something that you want to see happen so that is going to unfortunately detract but if you go to a college information se uh, session introduce yourself to the representative for this college and talk to them and try to explain why you got that D and give the extenuating circumstances, you can move up one spot. And remember we mentioned earlier, I think Georgia moved up three spots in her um, in her uh, essay. Perhaps she spoke more in detail about why she got the D. Maybe she had some significant family impact, but regardless, um, trying to do whatever you can to improve your standing, that's gonna help. If you are a legal resident of Montana, move up two spots. Well, Fred, move back up two because how many people do you know from Montana? And how many people from Montana are probably gonna go to Union County University? Not many, so Fred is very, very, very unique. If you never gave your counselor any personal information for use in writing your college recommendation, move down one spot. This goes very similar to not really picking the right teachers to do your letter of recommendation. If they don't have anything 
quality to know about you that sets you apart from anybody else, how can they write you a really good recommendation? So that is going to detract from your value right there. OK, so this is the grand finale coming up next. So everybody take a look at our admissions. We only have one student who is in the top three that started in the top three. OK, that is our 4.0 and he's not in first place. So take a look at everybody else um, sitting kind of pretty. And Chris, I'm going to let you reveal the last one. <laughs> if your last name is Bezos, the name of the college library is Bezos, and it is not a coincidence. Move all the way to the front and stay there. You're number one. So yes, family connections as far as like a history with the college, kind of like being a legacy, that makes a difference. So um, Chances are, if your last name is Bezos, you can afford to go to any college, so it doesn't matter. But, you know, that does make a difference right there. So, George, you get to move all the way to the front. You're going to school at Union County University. So is Bob. So is Fred. Uh, Mary and Harry, you were close. Harry had been in there, we think, because of the GPA, but didn't get to make it. And we know what happened to Julia, so don't be her. And I think that's just important. I just want to pause here and just mention, you know, when you take a look at this, there are some of the factors that the students absolutely themselves um, impacted, right? They impacted their grades. They impacted what extracurricular activities they did, how honest they were, the amount of time and effort they put into their essay. They, um, they impacted whether they played an instrument, certain things, what they wanted to major in. But there are also things maybe you have another college that is specifically looking for pre-med majors and so if you're a pre-med major at another college that might give you a boost some of the things that are part of the college admissions game we'll call it because it kind of is a game you won't ever really know you may not know that a college is trying to fill out um, having applicants from all 50 states and the only state they're missing is montana right you don't have any way of knowing that and they won't share that information with you. So I guess the message for this is if you're a student and you can control certain things, control those things, right? Do the best you can in school, have integrity, be honest, work hard, be a well-rounded student, spend time with your essay, make sure your teachers know you and that you fill out all of that information and score so they can write a really nice recommendation for you so that the college can really get an idea. The whole point of college admissions, they are trying to find students that are going to persist past their freshman year. They want students who are going to be there um, for all and, and graduate, honestly, in four years. So, I mean, I think, you know, it, it, it really is how can you sell yourself to that college through putting this whole picture of who you are together? My daughter asked me yesterday, she said, you know, some of these schools get between 30 and 40,000 applications every year. Are they really looking at all of this information? And the answer is, yeah, they are. You know, at some level, they are looking at the, the complete package for some of these students. So, you know, it's important to put all of those things together. Um, so we have a couple of questions. I'm going to publish this one. And um, Dan, I'm going to let you answer it. It is, does it hurt to go in undecided? <clears throat> that's a tough question to answer and the the only real answer for that is it depends on the school there are certain schools who um encourage students to come into an undecided freshman program it's a survey year where you get to explore everything that's available at the college and declare a major at the end of the year um and and those programs are fantastic unfortunately a lot of times those programs do end up costing or requiring their students to move into that fifth year of college to get that undergraduate program. So you want to look at the school and, and look at, you know, it doesn't undecided, is that going to factor into to my ability to graduate within four years? Over, overwhelmingly at the majority of colleges, undecided is not going to be a, a deal changer for admission or, or not being admitted. Um, <coughs> there are a few schools though that are, are very, forthright in their statement saying that if you come in undecided, these majors will not be available to you. There's no transfer pathway into the School of Engineering, or not Engineering, the School of Architecture at UNC Charlotte. You're either accepted as a freshman or you never get into that program. 
That's just the way the program is. The, the nursing program is the same. Um, and that varies school by school. That, that's a really good question to have with your counselor. Once you identify the schools you want to apply to and you sit down and say, I'm thinking about applying and, and I'm thinking about applying undecided because I, this is what I'm thinking. They can kind of help guide you through that pathway because if they don't know, they have no problem picking up the phone and calling the school and asking. That's their role. That's our job is to get the answer to those questions that the school's not going to really answer to you. They're going to encourage every student to apply to, if you if you take the Harvard tour, regardless of what your GPA and class rank are, they're going to encourage you to apply. Um, but truthfully, my high school GPA and transcript pretty much guaranteed I wasn't getting into Harvard. So a counselor kind of talked me out of making that decision. Um, and and that, that that's what you need to have these conversations with your school counselor. Some of your schools are lucky enough to have college advisors at the school. Uh, tap that resource too. They're, they're, they're people who are provided by some local colleges to help kids with the college admissions process. And most importantly, ask the school rep. All of our schools are having virtual meetings right now that juniors and seniors can sign up for through SCORE. In a regular year, the, the reps come out to the colleges and talk to the students. They're trying to get you into their school. Ask them the questions outright. Take the time to know them because in all probability, that's one of the three people that's gonna read your application anyways. So it's a perfect opportunity to start to develop a relationship with someone who's gonna be deciding whether you get to go to the school or not. Okay, um, we are almost ready to wrap up, but there's a good question in here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share that question. Would some schools prefer that you come in as a peer freshman without the two-year degree from the College Pathway Program? So for an example, would an Ivy League pass you over because you'd be a transfer instead of a true freshman? I think it depends on your age. If you're coming in with that college pathway from the Career and College Promise program, but you're still coming in right out of high school, I think that's that could be different. But you know, transfer students from um, from community colleges have much higher acceptance rates than true freshmen. So that's all account. Dan, you've had a lot of experience with this. Would you like to speak to that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I, I will say that colleges are not going to be, they're not afraid of having students transfer with college credits, but please understand it is possible to have an associate's degree from a community college, apply to a four-year school, and the four-year school say absolutely you can come, but we're only going to recognize X number of transfer credits. For example, um, you know, we'll use a local college. Davids, Davidson University or Davidson College only allows students to bring in 12 credits as transfer credits from community colleges. If they're an incoming 18-year-old uh, student or what would be a traditional freshman age student. So you could do the, the two-year pathway in high school and get your associate's degree, but you're not going to bring all those credits with you. Um, every other, other schools will look at that case by case, and it might be a situation with they allow you to bring in the credits for everything except the credits that are in your major because if you're going to be a biology graduate from Duke University, you're going to take all of your credits through Duke University in biology. Um, so each school is a little bit different, but I, I don't think there's a college out there in the admissions world that's going to look at a student who's completed college level work at the high school uh, in high school and been successful at it and say this student shouldn't come to our school. They're going to see that as a positive, not as a negative. Awesome, thank you. Um, well, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. So what are the things that are really considered? So these are some of the pieces that we talked about in the um, in the simulation. Academic rigor, extracurriculars, your essay absolutely counts, your scores count, are you unique? What about your family history? Where do you live compared with where the school is? Um, what kind of um, academic choice are you looking at and what are the college's needs and unfortunately you'll never really know what the college's needs are. So I think that's why it's really important. That's why you'll see some kids with a really high GPA and really high test scores not get into a school and other kids will and as parents you're probably thinking what in the world happened? This kid got in and this one didn't. Sometimes that's the the, the mystery of the college admissions game. So I think you know come up with several schools that you're interested in applying to. I heard somebody say today that there was some students applying for maybe 20 something schools and that's probably a little bit much 
Uh, we wouldn't ever suggest that you do that because again, it's pretty expensive to apply to 20 schools. When you think about application fees between 50 and $100 a piece, um, you wanna make sure that you're applying to schools that are a realistic fit for you. So students, take a look and score. A lot of high schools are allowing um, allowing underclassmen to participate in some of the virtual visits this year because it is virtual and there's, the space is unlimited. So listen to the college admissions reps, find out, ask questions, think about is it a college that you're really interested in, um, and then make that decision. So let's talk a little bit about um, a couple of upcoming supports that we have. So our next uh, webinar in the College Readiness Parent Series is specifically for parents. It's College Entrance Exams 101. Uh, that will be really just kind of an overview of the different types of um, college entrance exams, ACT, SAT, and what they're, how they're compared. And then um, we will have college recruiting for athletes the first week of December. We'll publish the registration for both of these events within the week. They're not up yet, but they will be posted soon. And um, the college recruiting for athletes, I'll say, is a really helpful session, no matter how young your athlete is, because you want to get started with that early. The other supports we have um, specifically for students for ACT and SAT support, we will be doing a blitz that's for the ACT and the SAT in November. Um, and then of course we mentioned the Albert self-paced practice that you can access right from the student startup page. We'll be doing another blitz in February specific to the ACT only, and we'll do another one in April for the SAT. Those blitzes are for students. So the webinar for college entrance exams is for the parents. But the blitzes are, are really for high school students. And I will tell you, um, Huntington Learning Center does those for us for free. They're a great partner with us. And she gives really practical tips about um, how you should work through that test for if you're a student, how much time you should spend, should you answer the question, should you leave it blank? What are some strategies for making sure that, that you're getting the best score that you possibly can? Um, also, South Piedmont Community College offers FAFSA support. So once you're a senior, um, keep in mind, completing the FAFSA can be very daunting, but they will help you even if you're not planning to attend South Piedmont Community College. You can contact the financial aid office. We've got a link on here. And again, we will share these slides with everyone who attended. Uh, we'll post a recording on our college readiness page, but they will help anybody. You can make an appointment. They will sit down with you and go through the whole thing. And then each student in grades 9 through 12 this year um, has a um, counseling site on Canvas in their Canvas account. For seniors, we've put a, an application timeline with lots of great resources in there. Um, there's score support. There's lots of different things. And so for our underclassmen, there's different resources as well. So that happens once you're in high school. And um, this is an app that we mentioned earlier on. If you want to take a, use your, your phone and do and scan that QR code. This is a really cool app for uh, virtual college tours. So that's pretty, uh, that, that's a pretty cool app that lets you really have insight into those different colleges. My kids have had fun playing with those. And we just have one of the cheap VR headsets that my elementary school student has. You put the phone in it and then you can look all around and kind of see what those look like. There's also one that's specific to North Carolina called Gear Up VR North Carolina. So again, you can scan this QR code and access that information. Um, it has specifically just the colleges in North Carolina. And that concludes our webinar for tonight. So a couple of um, pieces of information. We will share We will share the question and answer. If I can download that, um, if, if I am able to download that, we will put that as a link in this presentation so that you can access it, because I know a lot of people ask some really good questions that we responded to. and. Um, we appreciate you and hope that you will join us at a future webinar. Everybody have hope you have a great night.